Hello guys, Rob here from Decoded and today I just want to have a little talk about the Node Wrangler add-on. It's a fantastic little tool that I don't think most people get the most out of because they don't know what it can do and they don't know the shortcuts and without going through the whole manual you're not going to learn them unless you watch a video like this. So I just want to have a quick little talk so I can show you exactly what this thing can do. So the Node Wrangler, if you don't know, is a Node based add-on that comes automatically with Blender, but it isn't turned on. So if you want to activate it, what you're going to have to do is go to Edit Preferences, go to Add-ons, just do a quick search for Node Wrangler and make sure that this little tick box here is enabled. Then you can close your preferences up and you'll have it turned on. Right, and I suggest that you do turn it on because this thing is fantastic. So let me show you what it can do. Right, so I have a principal shader here for this, um, for this cube and it has three different texture maps going into the right slots, okay? So to align these, all I have to do is select them all. And if I press Shift and Equals, it'll automatically align these with equal spacing, right? If you have them horizontal, it'll put them horizontally. If you have them vertical like this, it sticks them in a tower. If we press Shift and P, it'll put the nodes into a frame. Once they're in a frame, you can just select the frame and with the G key, you can move that around and it'll all act like one node. You can still make alterations to the nodes inside it. You can even move those if you want inside the frame. And if you want to get rid of the frame, just select it and press delete and you'll get rid of that. Now, when you've got a texture map like this or any point in your node setup, if you want to have a look at what's going on, what you can do is press control and shift and then left click and that'll put the texture, it'll bypass the shader and it'll just put it into what it calls the viewer node, which is over here. All the viewer node is really, it's just an emission shader, right? So if we control shift and click on the roughness map, we can have a look at that. And the normal map, we can have a look at that. And then we can do this to the principal and it should just connect it straight to the output. Because this is a shader, it can connect it directly to the output. It doesn't need the emission. Right, so let's say we don't have a connection to the output at all and we want to connect something up. We've finished our node setup and we want to connect this. If we just select this and, and press O, it'll go to the output. If we don't have an output for whatever reason and we press O, it'll automatically add one for us. Right, so let's say that we have our textures here and I'm just going to realign those with shift and equals and we want to um, add a texture coordinate system instead of adding the mapping node and the texture coordinate node if we just press ctrl t with this node selected it'll automatically add those nodes for us right so we can get these move those over to the side if we want to connect up the other nodes instead of playing around with these fiddly little output things what we can do is we can uh, alt right mouse button and just drag out and you can see it selects this whole node and it selects this whole node and it connects them up so you can just connect them straight across like that if you want to get rid of a connection if you want to cut any connection in the thing then what you can do is press ctrl and right mouse and you can just cut through so we can just slice straight through any connection like this the third uh, lazy tool that's really really cool is if we press shift and then right mouse through any connection, it'll add this. This is called a reroute. And all a reroute does is it gives you a copy basically of the output of the branch. So let's say we wanted to connect up um, subsurface color. Instead of having two connections like this, you just use the reroute and connect it on. Once you have a reroute in your scene, you can just select it, use the G key and you can move that wherever you want, slide it along the branch. So that's a really nice way to keep your, uh, if you have like a very messy node system, it's a good way to keep things organized. Makes it a bit easier to see what you're doing. Uh, if we have these connections here, and we want to connect them. There is another really, really fast way to do it. To connect up one input node to multiple outputs. If you select the outputs, hold down shift, select the input node, and then Shift and K will automatically connect each one of them up. 
I use that one all the time as well. That's a really, really cool one. Um, if we want to change a node, we can do that too. Let's say we added in a bump node, right, for the normal map. And we put that in and then you think, ah, what am I doing? It doesn't need to be a bump node because it's a normal map. It should be through a normal map node. If we select the bump node and we press, um, I think it's shift and S, yeah, shift and S, then it'll give you the normal uh, node creation menu. And if we select normal map, the bump node will change to a normal mode, but it keeps all of its connections, so you don't need to rewire them. Another thing we can do here, let's say we've got our, um, our color texture here, and we've got the roughness one. Let's say I wanted to mix those two together. Instead of adding in a, a mix node and, and wiring them all together, if we just select both of these and press Control numpad zero, it'll automatically put both of those through a mix node. Right, if we have them both selected and we press um, Control and plus, it goes through an add node, right? It goes plus add. If we do Control and minus, as you would expect with minus, it'll put them through a subtract. And if we press Control asterisk, it will multiply. And as you can probably guess, if you press the uh, forward slash and Control, it adds them through a divide. So let's leave that divide node there, but we want to change the factor, right? Instead of doing that with the mouse, which can be a bit fiddly sometimes, if we alt left click, um, left arrow or right arrow, you can do it in small increments. If we control shift alt arrow, you can do it the full whack. You can go from zero to one. And if you do shift alt, and then the arrow keys, it does like, 0 0.1 or 0 0.01 at a time, sorry. So you can make really, really small fine adjustments to that without having to like zoom in and, and do it with the mouse. That's a really interesting one as well. That's a good time saver. This next one isn't a Node Wrangler exclusive, but if you, uh, if you want to change multiple values at once, instead of going in, let's say we want to change the scale of this map, instead of going in one at a time, and changing it to like two. If we left click on one of the values and then pull down, you can select all three at once. And then we can change that to like say five, press enter, and it changes all three values at once. But then let's say after we do that, we decide, you know what? We don't actually need the, uh, the mapping node at all. We wanna keep the texture coordinate, but we don't want the mapping node. Well, if we delete that normally, that'll get rid of all the connections and we'll have to redo them. Instead of that, if we just press Alt and D with the mapping node selected, we can remove that node, but it'll keep all of the connections intact. And then we can move that to the side, press delete, and we can get rid of it. So guys, those are just some of my favorite Node Wrangler little shortcuts. There's plenty more out there. You can have a read through them yourself if you go up to the, uh, the preferences inside Node Wrangler. There's actually a show hockey list where it'll show you all the different hockeys that this thing has. There's tons and tons and tons of them. The ones I've just said there, I think are the ones that everybody should know about. If I've missed one, please leave it in the comments. If you like this video, please hit the like button and please consider subscribing to this channel as well. I put new content up every week. Thanks very much, guys. I'll see you in the next video.